fellow Zambians. First of all, I would like to say a very, very big congratulations to all of us who have made it into this new year, 2023. It is always necessary before you focus on what you're going to do in the year that you take stock of what has happened in the last year. As Zambia must prosper, we understand that a lot of things have been happening on the political scene and some of our citizens have said consistently that we have kept very quiet. Frankly speaking, our silence was not because we didn't have things to say, but it was because we had more important things to concentrate on. And that is very important for this party. We have now finished our manifesto. Our manifesto will be launched this year and we shall begin our mobilization and regalia distribution. That was more important to us because I've always said, as far as politics is concerned, if you don't have a plan, you don't have a vision, you don't have a strategy, you are going nowhere. Many political parties have been talking, but really, what have they been talking about? It's been criticisms and criticisms and nothing else. We believe in Zambia must prosper that when you criticize, you must have a solution. That is why we kept quiet and we insisted on finishing our manifesto quietly. But now we shall be making noise and making noise quietly too. Before we launch our manifesto, as president of Zambia must prosper, I want to clear a few things. A lot of people have misunderstood some of the decisions that I have personally taken and I want to take this opportunity to clear the record. I was in PF and as a member of the PF then I helped the late president Michael Chilofiasada in all his campaigns and made sure that PF ascended to power. No one can doubt that. Nobody can even challenge that. Some of these so-called leaders in PF today don't even know where the party came from, how we built the party and what the party stood for. I did not want to leave the patriotic front. I want that very clear. I pleaded with the leadership of the PF that I did not want to leave the Patriotic Front because it is a party that I helped to build. A party that I helped to win elections for the late President Michael Chilufiasata and indeed for Edgar Chagolungu in 2015 and in 2016 after ensuring that his candidature was validated in 2014 at the convention at the Mulungushi Rock of Authority. History doesn't lie and you can't change the facts. What I did for PF, nobody can doubt. Unless you just want to be vindictive. But the way in which the Patriotic Front begun to run its affairs and the way in which the patriotic front began to undermine itself and leave what we began to do as a pro-poor party meant that I could not stay in the patriotic front. Secondly, there was this issue of the third term which for me was a purely selfish agenda by some leaders within the Patriotic Front. A third term which I was not going to allow to go ahead. 
because it stood against the principle that is pronounced deeply in our Republican Constitution. A president who has been elected twice and has been sworn in twice into office cannot run for a third term. That's the only reason why I spoke very strongly against my elder brother, Edgar Chagolungu. It was nothing personal. It was the principle. Because of that, some forces within the patriotic front went and told lies to Edgar Chagwalungu and then he believed them and started thinking that I was against his leadership. They cooked up stories, cooked up cases, trumped up charges were leveled against me and rushed through the Central Committee and then they purported, they purported to expel me. An expulsion which I did not want to challenge because I knew it was going to be a waste of time. And because I stood on principle, I didn't want to seem as if I was begging to be a member. But this is the truth. I realized then that there was a clique within the Patriotic Front that was working against Edgar Chagolungu without him knowing that it was working against him. This clique began to mastermind a takeover which Edgar Chagolungu didn't know until quite late in the day. And I felt sorry for my big brother because he couldn't see it. I want to say this. I did not want to leave the PF. I was forced out of PF. I was forced out of PF because people had an agenda against both Lungu and myself. But Lungu couldn't see it. As head of state, I expected better from the Edgar Lungu. Especially that he knew that I was one of the architects to his candidature and indeed his presidency. But be that as it may, that's water under the bridge. So if anybody is going to tell me that I should go back to the patriotic front, I want to make this very clear. I am now the president of a political party. I cannot go back to the Patriotic Front. They didn't want me and there are still some players within the Patriotic Front who don't want me there because they understand what I'm capable of doing and they don't appreciate it but they want to give this nation mediocrity in the form of leadership. I will not accept that. Having said that, it does not mean that the Patriotic Front and Zambia Must Prosper cannot work together. I want to make that clear. My appeal to members of the Patriotic Front is that they must look reality in the eye and face reality as it stands. Currently, with the greatest respect to all the players who have filed nominations, all who have filed nominations on the ticket of the Patriotic Front leading up to their convention, I say none of them, none of them have got the muscle, the strategic analysis and indeed the acumen to defeat the current president. I said this before and I'll say it again. It is this same clique of so-called leaders who, in my view, are basically taking advantage of a very unfortunate situation. They have seen an opportunity within the Patriotic Front and they think and feel they should fill that hole even when they know they're not qualified for leadership. I'm saying this with respect, and I don't mean to attack anybody, but I want to set the record straight. We can work together with the Patriotic Front, but the kind of leadership that they have right now needs to change. I know 
that some of the leaders in the patriotic front are afraid of some of the things that they have done. And I know that with the kind of leadership we have now under the UPND, they will be hunted down, they will be prosecuted, and three quarters of them will end up in jail. That I can assure you. So let us not waste time. Let us put our heads together. My appeal to all those leaders who are vying for positions in the Patriotic Front is look at what you're going to put this political party that Dwamaiko Churufiasata built from ground up into. You are going to drive this party into the ground. If any one of you is elected at a convention to lead this party, you may want to put in all you can, but trust me, and I know cases are being built against each one of you as we speak. Some of you have already been convicted. And whether you like it or not, those cases will get tougher, stronger, and you end up in jail. Then you'll be crying foul. What do you want the people to do at that time? My suggestion is simple. The UPND has proved in the short time that they have been running this country that they're not good for this country in terms of leadership. They have no clear manifesto. They have no political manifesto. They're just running the country haphazardly. On haddock basis, they make things as they go on. I went to the UPND not to join the UPND like some of my brothers did. I never took up a position there. I went to UPND to go and help the UPND get PF out of power because PF had become incorrigible. PF was not listening. PF was not willing to listen to advice and not, was not willing to change. That's the only reason I went to UPND. I was offered positions in UPND. I refused to take up those positions because one of the conditions I was being given constantly was that I needed to join the UPND. And I said I will never join UPND. But in a war situation, if anybody has studied history, you and I know that alliances are made sometimes for convenience. Alliances are made sometimes to teach people a lesson. I said this before and I'll say it again. Nadilandio kutila ba PF mukashara muri muamone ni. Mukashara muri muamone ni. And muamone ni na ifika number. You can't blame me as some of you are trying to do. You are trying to make it seem as if Kelvin Fuwewari is the one that got PF out of power. No. PF got itself out of power because PF became greedy, it lost direction, it lost the vision of Asata, and it became corrupt, it encouraged thuggery, it encouraged cadarism, and it encouraged upupu of public money. That is why you lost power. But on the other hand, UPND did not win elections because people loved UPND. Again, let's be very clear. UPND won elections because people had no option. And it was the only strongest political party at the time. Therefore, people gave power to UPND in the hope that they could correct things. But we are seeing the opposite today. But here is a very clear message. I am saying this from the bottom of my heart. This is my first message to the Zambians this year. And I want them to understand. Let us understand why the UPND is in power today. They are in power because they took a chance. They are in power because they were supported. And yes, I was one of the people that supported them. But that did not mean that people loved UPND. People voted for UPND because there was no one else to vote for. The goodness, the goodness now is this. There is now a new political party on the scene. 
and that political party is Zambia must prosper. Zambia must prosper comes with a new manifesto. It comes with a new lease of life. It comes with a very clear mind, a clear vision as to where we can take this nation. We have put our women first. The second wave of employment and attack on the economy is our youths and then our workers from all sectors of life. We understand from what we have taken as a study in the last few years and the last few months especially coming up to our manifesto. We know what we need to do to change course. The UPND on the other hand don't know what they want. In fact the UPND is reliant on what they call direct foreign investment which will not take them anywhere. We in Zambia must prosper believe that we have the resources here we have the human capital here which we can use to build and prosper this country and that's the difference we cannot form an alliance with the UPND because we know what they are capable of doing now and the goodness is and listen and listen good please Mwebena Zambia listen the goodness is ukoswishe lungu kwenda mo not to end up by UPND, not to move over by Ngachita, never did watch it. And that's what's important. We have learned our lessons. For the PF, you, the PF, know me, and I know you. With the other political parties, let's come together, let's build. But the leadership in the PF right now must just own up and realize that they need to join forces. They need to join forces with a leader who understands what the PF was meant to be and what Zambia must prosper intends to do. If the fear in getting power is that you need protection, that protection will be given to you because we in Zambia must prosper do not agree with the methodology that the UPND is employing right now. There are many ways of solving political problems. And what the UPND is doing right now is not one method we can use. We can use different methods which will bring back the unity of the country, which is going to avoid tension in the country, which is going to avoid bringing back caderism. The UPND is actually no different from what PF became in the latter days. They pretend like they don't want cadres, they're actually fueling the cadres. They're using the cadres for violence.